Hey everybody, it's Dan the Get School Dude once again with another GitLab tutorial video. Today I'm going to show you a couple advanced mechanisms for triggering GitLab CI jobs. Specifically, I'm going to show you how to control what gets tested via the naming of the topic branches that you use, particular patterns in the commit message itself, and advanced job triggers that only trigger certain jobs when certain files change, which is a pretty cool feature. If I lose you in this video, please go back and take a look at my earlier GitLab CI videos. I'll have links in the description. Let's go ahead and get started. So today we're going to be using our Hello World repo. I've created a topic branch uh, called this because we're going to be pushing to GitLab today. And if you recall from my earlier videos, the GitLab CI configuration for what gets tested is stored in this tracked hidden file called GitLab CI. Uh, dot yaml and if I open this file you can see that we have two stages a build stage a run stage and in the build stage we do the build code job which just does a make in the project and the run stage has two runs uh, nominal and command line and these two jobs run in parallel this is what the first job does and this is what the second job does so if you recall by default pushing to any branch or tag will trigger your GitLab CI jobs uh, which are defined in this file so let me go ahead and demonstrate that for you. I've got a branch here that I have not yet pushed. Let's go ahead and push this to origin. You can see the push is complete and we can flip over to the project itself and take a look at the pipeline section. And we can see that a new pipeline was triggered. Let's go ahead and create a merge request for this, uh, this new branch because we're gonna need it here in a minute. Let's hit assign to me and submit. Now we've got a nice merge request page that shows our branch. And this page will be able to see the pipelines that uh, actually get associated with this topic branch. But right now there's no commits because this topic branch is coincident with master. The first thing we're gonna do is change this behavior by adding in our GitLab CI YAML file an only block. And each only block can be job specific. And we're gonna add one for each job here. So for example, type only. And then these are the conditions that you can specify that will trigger this job only if these conditions are met. So for example, one of the supported syntax methodologies is a regular expression. And I'm going to use this regular expression, which essentially is saying only trigger this job if the branch naming matches this regular expression pattern, which basically says one or more numbers followed by a single dash followed by anything at the end of the line. So really what we're trying to say here is I only want to build this job if my branch matches this type of pattern, which is a pretty common pattern. Uh, so for example, you know, if, if I have issue one, two, three, and then a short description. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this pattern to the other jobs here so that it applies to all three of them. And we are going to commit this change. If I look at get status, we're going to add the change and we're going to commit it. Link to our issue, which is good practice. Write the commit. And now you can see that I committed this on the branch with the naming pattern that we care about. Before we push this, uh, I want to push the exact same commit on a different branch name to prove that we aren't going to trigger a job if the branch name doesn't match this pattern. So, for example, let's create a fake branch at the location of head, and we're going to actually type the command correctly. You can see that we're now on fake branch, and fake branch is coincident with this branch. And now, if we git push fake branch, to origin, you can see the push is complete. If I flip over to our merge request, this merge request is useless to us for the time being because we pushed to a fake branch name, not this. So we need to go over to the pipeline section and we can see that there is no new pipeline triggered for the test branch that we just pushed. I can prove to you that the branch exists by opening a new tab in the branches section and you can see that's right here. So we just demonstrated that through our naming pattern change, we can decide, oh, we don't want to trigger any uh, jobs if, if the branch doesn't match this naming pattern. So 
the last step is to actually push the change to this branch and verify that the jobs do trigger for that branch. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's get checkout to demonstrate job trigger branch. Get push origin. See the push is complete. We switch over to our merge request. Take a look. You can see already new pipelines running associated with our uh, issue six branch. Okay, so now that you know how to restrict jobs based on ref naming using this type of notation, let's look at some uh, job triggers from the commit message itself. So GitLab CI provides a lot of environment variables which are accessible in the workspace and actually in the CI configuration itself. Uh, I'll, in the description, I'll put a link to a list of all those variables. It's a long list that uh, looks like this. But today we're going to only use one of them, the CI commit message. So first thing I'm going to do is back out the changes that we did for the branch naming, just because I, I don't want to confuse you with multiple only clauses here. So we're going to add this one. Now, get my spacing on point here. Now this basically, we have a sub clause under the only called variables. And so this is for the section for variable evaluations. Now this is saying, that the commit message must contain through regular expression pattern, that's what this means, uh, the phrase trigger CI for this job to actually trigger. So let's go ahead and add this to all of our jobs so it applies equally. By the way, there's a way to create templates so that you can define this once up top and apply it to multiple jobs, but for the sake of simplicity, we're not going to do that in this video. Okay, so we've got that rule for all three jobs. Now let's go ahead and give it a test. Get status. You can see that we have that change. Get add the change. It's in the index. So let's commit the change. Now in this commit message, I am not going to put the you know trigger CI phrase because I want to show you that when we do this without the phrase and we push the branch, it's not going to trigger. So I want to prove it to you. So here we go. We just made the commit. Let's push this to origin. And we'll flip over to the project. On the pipeline page, we can see that the last trigger job was 13 minutes ago. And the commit, and that was on 8B44. And if we switch over to our terminal, we can see that our top commit is E32, which proves that no job trigger happened here. So let's make a nothing change just to create a commit message. So I'll add a couple spaces here. You can see that there's really no change, just spaces. We'll add the file and get commit. And I want to use the pattern phrasing that we decided to use. I'll call this fake update. And I'm going to put here trigger CI. Now the parentheses aren't required. We didn't specify that in the regular expression. But I'm just putting them here to separate in my own head that this is a command that essentially is going to get read by the framework to know to trigger the job. So let's go ahead and write this and push the branch. <clears throat> branch push successfully. Let's flip over and see if we have a new pipeline. And we do. New pipeline pending. And we can see that it's pending on the merge request page. So you might be asking yourself, when would I want to use this? Well, in general, you don't typically want to do something like this, but there are use cases where it would be useful to only trigger CI jobs on particular commits. Imagine your testing takes a very long time and you don't have enough runners to support the continuous testing for one reason or another. Uh, another possibility would say, let's say you're, you know, here we're just using make and GCC, but let's say your build process actually used some kind of proprietary license as part of the build, and your runner can only spawn so many tests before running out of license. In general, with continuous integration and testing, and you know, GitLab CI and Jenkins and all these tools, you want to be testing as much and as frequently as possible. But in reality, sometimes you're bound by the specific constraints of the project. This feature can help you tune your CI to match those kinds of constraints. I hope that makes sense. Now that we've covered triggering jobs via branch naming and also commit message patterns, 
The last example I'm going to show you is how to trigger jobs only when certain files change. Um, this is a relatively new feature of GitLab CI. It's introducing GitLab 11.4, and for context, as of today's date, which is June 1st, 2019, the bleeding edge of GitLab is version 11.11. .11. So it's relatively new, pretty cool feature. I'm going to show you how it works now. And the way that we do this is by adding a changes section to the only section of these um, specifications in this YAML file. So let me go ahead and back out um, what we did for the commit message pattern matching. And we're going to go in here and add a changes section. And then we're going to list a set of files that if they change, this job will be triggered on that condition. So I'm going to use the make file, everything in the source directory, and everything in the include directory, which essentially represents all the source code, all the inputs to this system. And we're just going to go ahead and add this section to all jobs like we did before, so it applies equally. Write the file, get status shows our change, add it, hit commit. Okay, so we just made a commit on this branch that backs out the commit message trigger and instead enforces a changes to files trigger. So let's go ahead and push this branch and see if a job is triggered. Over to the pipelines page and you can see because I've been pausing and editing and stuff, the last job to be triggered was 11 minutes ago so our push did not trigger a new job. That actually makes sense because the only file we changed was the YAML file itself. Now, some of you may immediately react and say, hey, you should probably add the YAML file itself to this changes section so that if you change what gets tested, it actually kicks off jobs. And that makes a lot of sense. But I didn't do that on purpose to test you. That's right. So let's go ahead and modify a file that we know should trigger a job. Let's go into this hello world and Let's just go ahead and put a print that says, we're done. Shows our change, add you. Of course, we should be testing locally, right? Make, clean, make. Everything works if I were to run it. And you can see the new print here, so we know my change didn't break anything. So let's go ahead and commit this change, a change to a file under the source directory. commit, commit made, let's push it and see if it triggers a new pipeline. Refresh the page, up. Oh, yep, new pipeline running. Flip over to the merge request page, we can see that the new pipeline was triggered and it's associated with the merge request. So I want to talk briefly about if you should do this or not. Th this can be a dangerous thing to do, although there are use cases where you'd want to only run certain tests if certain files change. The problem with doing this is it requires you to be diligent about knowing what inputs could actually affect a test. And in large complex projects, it's not nearly this simple. And just defining the set of files and which tests those files could affect can be a difficult and error prone process, which is why I usually err on the side of caution and test everything on every change, even if you're just tweaking a readme, just run everything just to be safe. Now, if you have really long build times, license constraints, things like that, sometimes you don't have a choice. And if that's the case, you can use this type of thing to restrict what gets tested when. So that's pretty much it for this video today, guys. There are more advanced things you can do. Uh, take a look at the links in the description to see all the variables you can trigger actions off of. You can do a lot of complicated things if you want to. I didn't show it, but in addition to this only clause, there's an inverse called accept, which is essentially uh, the exact opposite of only, meaning don't trigger this job if these accept criteria are met. Uh, you can combine the accept and only criteria to do some uh, pretty complicated things with job triggers if you want to. Thanks for watching. Do me a favor, hit that like and subscribe button. I'm Dan the Get School Dude, and I'll see you guys next time.